In this video, I'm going to show how I made an RC car run entirely off of wireless power. There are no batteries on board. The car is getting 100% of its electrical power from my transmitter loop. After successfully producing wireless power transfer in my previous video, I wanted to see if I could power more than just some LEDs. A friend of mine suggested powering an RC car, so I went and bought the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. After a quick test to make sure the car worked, I started taking it apart to see how to modify it. The nice thing about such cheap toys is that they're really simple and easy to disassemble. I replaced the 3.6 volt battery with some test leads and hooked them up to my power supply to see what kind of current this thing will pull when it's running. Without a load it pulled about 0.6 amps, and the stall current was about 3.5 amps. I'd expect in most cases it would probably pull less than 2 amps though, so I could definitely feed that with my power transmitter. To regulate the wireless power to a consistent supply voltage, I got some cheap buck converters that can put out up to 2 amps. I connected a 2 ohm resistor to the output of the converter to approximate the load from the RC car, then moved the input voltage up and down on my power supply. The output voltage held steady as long as the input was greater than 1 volt above my set point. Next I soldered the power leads from the RC car to the output of the buck converter to see if the car would run off the converter as I supplied the converter with different voltages from my power supply. It seemed to work perfectly fine, so I went ahead and installed the buck converter in the battery bay of the car. Next I designed a bracket to fit over the body of the car, kind of like a saddle which I'd used to mount the power receiver circuitry to. This fits snugly over the contour of the car body and I glued it in place. Then I designed the long arms that would hold the 16-inch receiver loop in place around the car. These were bolted onto the saddle with number 6 screws. Once the arms were in place, I mounted the receiver loop and fastened it in place with blocks that screwed into the arms. Then I built the ZVS driver for the power transmitter. This one uses IRF-250 MOSFETs and 20 47 nanofarad low ESR capacitors in parallel to keep the resistance as low as possible. The output lugs were connected by heating them with a blowtorch and then pressing them onto thick solder pads at the bottom of the board. This will drive a 30 inch loop of copper tubing as the transmitter running at about 100 kilohertz. You can find a guide on how to build this circuit in my video about induction heating. Next I installed the receiver rectifier. This would take the high frequency input voltage and turn it into a smooth DC voltage with a bridge rectifier and a large capacitor bank, which would then feed the buck converter. The field produced by the transmitter hits the receiver coil, which has this resonant capacitor to tune it to the 100 kHz that the transmitter is operating at. The high frequency alternating current passes through a bridge rectifier to the DC output onto the buck converter which regulates the voltage to 3.6 volts and finally to the internals of the RC car like the radio, motor, and steering servo. Now that everything is built, it's time to try it out. For my first test, I'm only going to run the transmitter at 12 volts to make sure nothing blows up. First, it's too far away to receive enough power, so I nudged it a little closer with my foot. Signs of life, but still too weak. One interesting thing I noticed is that when the car is halfway over the transmitter loop, it gets almost nothing at all, but as it moves outside a little bit, it starts to get more. With 12 volts, that's still not enough to move it, though. Now let's see what it'll do with the transmitter at 31 volts. It starts up from much farther away, but even at a higher power, it gets stuck in the dead zone. To understand why there's this dead zone on top of the loop, let's look at the cross section of the transmitter loop. The X mark represents current flowing into the screen, and the dot mark represents current flowing out of it. This current flow creates a circular magnetic field around the transmitter, with the arrows representing the direction of the field. 
This field is changing polarity about 100,000 times per second, but for simplicity I'm just going to show it like it's static. If we place a receiver loop in that field, which is concentric with the transmitter, the changing field of the transmitter will induce a current in it. This is true even if it's not perfectly centered. However, if the receiver loop is centered over one side of the transmitter loop, at a certain point, the polarity on either end of the receiver will be exactly opposite, which will cause a net zero current to flow through it. If we move further still, this effect of polarity canceling out goes away, and we get power once again, except current is traveling in the opposite direction. Looking at the transmitter loop from the top down, most of the area inside and the outer edges provide power to the receiver, but the area directly above the line is a dead zone. Okay, back to the test. Capacitors store enough energy that I can sprint outside the power zone in a quick burst, but once they discharge I get stranded out there. I guess the transmitter worked a little too well because when I drove close to it, the receiver wires connected to the resonant capacitors started to smoke and melt. So the wirelessly powered car was definitely a success, but just out of curiosity I wanted to measure the power the receiver was pulling in, so I connected a 2 ohm load resistor at the rectifier output and measured the voltage at various distances from the transmitter. The highest voltage I measured was about 8.7 volts. Across a 2 ohm resistor, that comes out to 38 watts, which was enough power to make the resistor too hot to touch. That's all for this video. In future videos, I'm going to try and make this device fly a drone, so stay tuned.